one of history's, actually I'm going to move this a little bit too, slightly mini fame here, one of history's biggest inventors, biggest failures. Does anybody know whose invention this is? It's Alexander Graham Bell's attempt at beating the Wright brothers in making manned personal flight. And as you can see, it's actually three to four years after the Wright brothers succeeded. And this was a miserable failure. But nobody remembers this. And that's what I'm going to talk about. One of the keys to becoming a great original thinker is daring to fail and building something called creative confidence. And we saw some of that just before, because daring to demo something on stage, trying it, showing that, is what we needed. And uh, <clears throat> creative confidence can be defined as believing in your ability to create change in the world around you. And this was coined by David Kelly at IDEO, and he also invented D School for Design Thinking at Stanford University, or he's part of the founders. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some of my experiences in how we can build creative confidence. Uh, but don't trust me, the reason I'm showing creative confidence isn't only because I believe in it, it's because one of the possibly most boring institutions, the World Economic Forum in Davos, said that these are the top three skills from 2020 and beyond to master to become successful in the future. And if we look around us, this is complex problem solving, critical thinking and creativity. And I argue that creative confidence lies behind a lot of this. Step one, to go into complex problem solving, you need to dare to go there, to actually even attempt to try something. And critical thinking is not only critical against it, it's actually observing and doubting the things, the status quo, it's trying to fix something better. And obviously creativity has a really, really strong connotation to creative confidence. So let's go through some of my observations uh, through implementing uh, or building creative confidence around the world. The first thing we start with is building learners' ability to observe and draw conclusions on their own. Because just like we actually mentioned in the speech before, to see something in a new way can be one of the most creative things you can do. But also to be able to observe, trust in your ability to come up with something that is better than the observation you made, coming up with an idea of how to change it to make it work. It's a really, really key skill. So I would like to show immediately one of the ways that we teach students to observe objects and draw conclusions. I should start with something really big. So this is a truss. Okay? It looks pretty strong. It's pretty big. But if you look at the truss, you can see that in the middle it's squishy. Why is it squishy? So they have to try it, they push the object, it's malleable, and they realize that, hey, there's, like, the triangles here seem strong, but this big square is not, so they are going to see, maybe that's why. I want them to just come up with an idea of why it happens, on their own. Then we take this little thing. Probably the absolutely simplest robot here at uh, the Steamex. Has, has anybody seen a simpler robot? We chose an insanely simple form factor. The first of the platonic solids, the tetrahedron, to make our tetrahedral walker. 
And this is where the students learn the basics of trial and error. So let's do one attempt at making this move. We challenge the students, you have to cover one meter the fastest possible way. You're only allowed to use one motor and one leg. So let's attempt. I brought the table because I saw that the stage floor is really low. So I brought the table to be able to demonstrate our first attempt at making the robot move. So we put it down and we observe. Nothing. Nothing's happening. Why? As you can see, the robot is so simple that you can obviously say that it's not even touching the table, so it can't possibly move forward. That's when we come into the next step, designing and implementing a change. So you observe this, you come up with a suggestion of how to change it, and you try to implement it. So what should we do? We go into the design phase. My prediction is that it needs to touch the table. So we go. We did an implementation immediately here. And we put it down. Oh, second failure. Now comes the really the biggest importance in having a simple robot is that we want to go from this chasm of fear that is usually there in every complex robot you see. The reconstruction takes so much time that most students don't want to move from a functioning robot and rebuilding something original because it takes so much time to rebuild it and you might not even end up in a functioning robot. So, have something super, super simple. It starts out not super advanced, but the implementations and changes in both the code and construction are so short that you build the confidence that your ideas can actually push you forward. So let's do a second attempt. I'm making it touch the table a little bit less. And then we have a jumping robot. And I was going to be sad here. <laughs> so you see, these are the small successes that we want the students to experience. Because these things will build their ability to use any tool that you see here. Because in the beginning, you're just following somebody else's plan. In this case, when it's this simple, the complexity increases. And the complexity is neither in robot nor code. The complexity lies in the use of your head. The complexity is in the process of changing it. So we have an iterative process to achieve a better design. So that's one of my favorites. And the third super, super important key to building your creative confidence is testing bad ideas and daring to fail. Just like we said, saw before, it increases your risk. But the reason this is important is the reason I showed the first slide of Alexander Graham Bell's biggest, biggest failure is that nobody remembers the failures. We remember his greatest ideas. He invented the telephone, he invented the lost... So, you know, that's the thing. Every original thinker knows that you've gone through multiple failures. You can take uh, classic music, Bach and Beethoven. They have a couple of masterpieces, but for every masterpiece, there's a huge amount of not-so-masterpieces. So the best way 
to have a great idea is to have many ideas. The second thing is daring to fail. Because daring to fail makes you be able to reach things that you never, like, to reach that original point and to dare to share your failures and together try to fix them. And failures is one way of achieving an original thought. So I'd like to show you a student project that we usually do that uses the two first, well, actually all three things we've shown here in this, on the slides. So this, you see what it is? An umbrella, recognize it. Now this is going to be tricky because I usually don't use my <laughs> You should have a headset on, but you see, it's a functioning umbrella. One of the failures the students do when they build this, it's also a simple build, five to ten minutes maximum. But we don't give them an instruction. We give them an instruction on how to observe an umbrella, try to reverse engineer it using the tool, and then try it out. And one thing that happens is that somebody maybe messes up the length here. And this is one of the first examples of how we can turn a failure into something else. Maybe a key to innovation. So now when we open the umbrella, we close it, it closes just fine, we push it up one leg rises much further. So then we give the students a tool that in this case is not a physical tool, it's a mental tool on how to approach this. So the first thing is you try to observe it. Where can I use this failure? So you start thinking, okay, it's windy and rainy outside. You use a little bit of storytelling, you walk around with your umbrella, and you need to look forward. You can pop up one side of the umbrella and still be covered. So we have a micro-invention coming out of a silly little mistake. So this is the thing, to build that step forward from failure instead of, as we're doing today, the students uh, stigmatizing failure. is a really, really important key to be able to move on, because right now, Failure is one and done. You write the test, you get your grade, and it might stay forever. Whereas that actually is feedback to you and your mind that this was an area I was a little weak in, so I need to improve it. And it's the same with everything, physical or design. Look at things as something that is not static. It is just when, when you experience failure as static that it becomes just that. So we try to teach them how to, how to fix these things. So I'm going to show you a little coding project also. So we can convert this into an animated object using our little circuit board. And actually, I think we could definitely use the Toki Maker that we showed before also to do this. And you can even open an umbrella through the internet, which is probably one of the best ideas ever. <laughs> and that's what we come back to, test that ideas too. It would be really cool to have internet controlled, browser controlled umbrellas. With this one, I'll just make one that is light controlled, but now I see the light sensor is gone. So we skipped that failure. Yeah, but the light sensor has dropped off. So we just like Tokyo Labs, we also use <laughs> uh, regular light sensors, anything they can use, any analog sensor, snap it on. <clears throat> so I'll try another amazing failure of how to experience or try to change the system. Uh, and one of the ways that we make each project that the students make unique is we use biometric designs. So I'm gonna show you my foot here and show you one example of a really great project that came out of something completely ridiculous.
I prepared so you don't have to stand and wait for too long. <laughs> two feet. But basically, this is a physics experiment that we designed to be able to both test an idea, dare to fail, and try out something new. So what you do, this is something you can do at home with so your students. How many are teachers here or are principals? Yeah. This is something you immediately can use. So use your foot, uh, use every student's different shoe shape and foot shape. Draw it. A drawing of my shoe. This makes automatic variation for you and the class to observe. I also really love raising the risks. Because if you talk about embracing failure, it's really important to show it. So that was just a little passes. So I'll continue to cut this foot out. So now we have three feet, not the length, but three foot shapes. This will become an amazing physics experiment, and I hope you want to watch it as I perform this live. So I will show you that these three, these three feet can become an amazing boomerang. So just remember and follow my instructions back home. You don't need our system to do this. It's just tape or anything to put these together. So first you make a hole. Then I choose to connect them with my own little system here, the little connector you see, because it's made to recycle material with. You started to recognize the shape. Now it looks a lot less like three feet and more like the propeller. And the propeller we recognize, don't we? In the front of an airplane, generating lift. But to make this into a boomerang, we need to do a few more steps. A second hold to be able to stop rotation between the, the feet. And now comes the final step, because we're already very, very close. So remember that in the class, you would have 30 different students. And our goal with every project we do is having at least 30 different solutions or objects to serve, preferably unique. So what I'll do now is show you the last little trick, which is folding up the toes
and then folding down what we in aerodynamics call the trailing edge of the boomerang. So, should we attempt a failure? Attempt a success, actually. <laughs> okay. that we share now together is the kind of wonder that we need to generate. And in this project, it's not just getting the, I know how to throw the boomerang. That's the thing. So if you try this the first time, the failure will teach you more than the success. So usually I actually show throwing it wrong. So should we do that? Because then you see what, <laughs> I see people ducking that computer won't protect you. <laughs> so you see, the principle of a boomerang is generating lift. So if I throw it flat, it will go up. So you see, you're actually learning something is happening in the boomerang. It's generating lift. And the direction is spinning. But if I make the circle, if, you could actually throw it in a loop. But if I make the circle flat, it will work every time. Glorious experiment to do with the students. Super low cost, because the thing is, the only way to practice these things is doing it many times. And if the system is too complex and costs too much, it will take too much time, and that's what we were showing before. I also want to show you another really good feature of this. really warm, like it's here on stage now, it's a perfect fan. So everything is in the power of observation. Just like we showed with the umbrella, observe it, come up with an alternate solution, face these failures together, and move forward. We need to move from failing permanently to failing forward. A lot of people talk about failure, but don't show the, that the successes that actually come from that so, one of my favorite things was actually the umbrella, so if I, maybe we can actually run a fetch a light sensor from, from the booth and I'll show it at the end. Because I really enjoy showing how you can power through, how your creative confidence can make you move on. And I really want to go from saying that learning by doing isn't good enough learning by trying and trying again is a much, much stronger experience. So if you only get to do something that you know is going to work, you don't really know the scope of the project, you don't really know what made it work, what was the difference between failure and success. And I really want that to be one of the things that all kids get an experience of. So, another one of my favorite projects is actually a little bit Strange here, but it's on the floor, so I have a few minutes left. I am incredibly passionate about teaching physics. One of the things I like most. And I also like to give experiences on how to incrementally change something that doesn't work we have to incrementally go through a complex problem-solving experience. So I designed this strange marble run. And as you saw, I just put it up. It was loose and strange. But we, we used ping-pong balls. <laughs> so now, the first thing. We imagine that we want to make a marble run for ping-pong balls. We put it on the track. The first thing we need to achieve is make the ping pong ball roll all the way down. So I observe where it got stuck, come up with an implementation, and because our system is so flexible, you can just squeeze the track, which makes it narrower, which makes the roll, the track has have less resistance. Then we do a second attempt. We observe, okay, it got stuck. 
or something here. Third attempt. Rolling down and into a lifting arm. So you see, this is the thing. We talk about the iterations. In the classroom, you have 45 minutes. So then you have to build and then you have to be able to test many times in the classroom. So everything we've done is trying to achieve that. Next step is setting a program in a little chip and making this move. So then it's just figuring out the time because physics you can rely on. And you see, hmm, it's slightly off. So what can I do to change it? And you'll see that if you put this in the classroom, they will come up with infinite amount of possibilities to change this. So it works. I will do an attempt. So now we observe again what happened. It's moving down. Actually, I only needed to <laughs> shift the last position here. And it actually works. So we have a closed loop. I was actually going to show you how many times I usually try to make it work. Now it stops. But this is an example of the trial and error approach. And it's so intrinsic that you will see that the students just go completely crazy and they start screaming. The more times you fail before you succeed, the bigger the experience is. So what we do is we give the teachers a learning platform that's based on lifelong kindergartens creative learning spiral to guide you through these things. We needed to put some heft into what we're inventing in terms of learning content. So that's why we're starting a collaboration where we go from imagination. Imagine I want to more run. We create the first attempt. We play with it. We share with our friends what happened. We reflect, is there something I could have done better? Could I have meant to something more? And we reimagine. And this way, I guarantee you, you will build new original thoughts. And it might seem hard to actually go into this field of building creative confidence. But as we've shown, it's probably one of the absolutely best ways of facing the problems in the future and actually making a change. So uh, thank you very much for listening. I swing by and try some more crazy, bad or good or great projects over at our booth. And find us at strawbees.com. Thank you very much.